So this is what the sled setup looks like. It's just a large otter sled. Uh, use kind of whatever sled fits your needs, what you have available. I have my crates of traps. Yesterday I put out 16 traps. I only got 14 left. So I got at least two more lodges I'm setting today. I have an axe in here. That's just in case I got to shave something, cut something real quick, a stick. I got the chainsaw for cutting ice, cutting wood, whatever I need to do. Scoop shovel, clearing snow away from sets, extra gas for the chainsaw, tripod for the camera. I have the extra coolant in there just because I was having some snowmobile issues with the coolant, but not having the issues anymore. Extension cables, wire, pliers, waterproof gloves. I got my fur choppers right there. I wear those over my black wool finger gloves. Chisel, and then snowmobile. This is just for snowmobiling around, setting on beaver lodges. So we're here at this beaver lodge and one good tell sign that I always kind of go by in the winter is that if there's a bunch of tracks going on to a beaver lodge, those tracks are typically canines or cats and they're coming up and they're sniffing those fumes that are coming out of the top. They, they want to eat that beaver. So there's all these tracks going to the top of the lodge. At the top of the lodge there's a vent. I'll show you that. Right here in front there's a few sticks sticking out. I'm trying to show with my finger. Right here you can't quite see them. There's just a handful. And if you look at the structure of the lodge, there's the peak of the lodge and then it comes down and then there's a little hump right here and I call those dormers and from the main part of the lodge they walk out to those and then off of those there's typically then two entrances that come out from that. So here's the peak of the lodge, it comes down, then right here is the dormer and then there's two entrances that come out of that and here's the feed pile in the middle and those entrances go on both sides of the feed pile. So then with that feed pile I then set two traps on each side. Um, this is just kind of my late winter trapping style. It's not the most efficient system in the world, but I found it works for me, for my needs. So when coming up on the feed pile, one thing I do right away is I'll take my the sticks sticking out of the feed pile and I'll break them. They're green. If they were old, lodge probably wouldn't be active. Now coming up onto the lodge, that vent that I was talking about is right here. And if we look down inside there, you see that there's frost forming and it's just a big hole. It's all the heat coming up out of those beaver. They're breathing, they're emitting off, you know, moisture and just heat in general and it's going to melt the snow on top. And now right here there's some weeds growing out of the lodge. There's not many. If there's a lot of weeds growing out of the lodge, it might not be beaver living in there. It could be otter. It could be muskrats. It's hard to say. But this is standing up here. Here's that dormer I was talking about. Entrance, entrance. There's probably another entrance right here. And then there's probably, you know, a trash chute on the back side where they throw their sticks out. I'm not setting those. I'm just putting two bathed sets on each side of the feed pile. One good thing to mention is if you're a cat trapper or a canine trapper and you got a lot of beaver lodges like this in the winter, late season, you know, February specifically, it'd be a good spot to do like some sort of portable little dirt hole or something that you could just kind of set something where your foothold could stay working. Put a trap out here, have it on a drag or something. I think it'd be a really hot set. I've never tried it. One of these years maybe I will. Maybe I'll find the time. But I'm going to grab my chisel and I'm going to kind of show you how I go about it. So, you gotta be cautious of thin ice. So, like I mentioned, here's the dormer, here's the entrance. I can figure right there will be a little bit thinner. through and I'm in a bunch of sticks so there's a few sticks that came out so I'm going to scoot another two feet that way and all I do is I just I cut through and I'm trying to find the edge of the feed pile finding where those runs are
still on the stick. So I'm going to move over even further. Once I get done with that, I'll show you back on the camera. So I got the four spots found, not cut through yet. There's a chisel, there's one, there's one to the right of it. Then over here, these two shoveled out spots. I'm going to chisel those out more and we'll show you. So we got the holes chopped. There's two. There's the other two. Then we got them laid out. Then we'll give you a rundown about how we go about making the actual set. I just call it the, the hanging baited set for the most part. So I got my extension cable, I just get that open, laid out on the ice. Then I got my trap. I don't set the trap, I just open it prepared to set. I got a little piece of bait stick. I just use some popple, small popple. I don't cut down a big popple tree for a little bit of bait, but you know, you can cut up a little popple tree. A little popple tree makes a lot of bait. And I just cut a piece of wire and I put this popple on there. And I just take the pliers and I twist it tight on there. Cut off the excess wire and use it to wire the other side. Take and beat that down. Then I take the pliers and the crotch of the pliers on the side. I use that on the popple. Just to give it a little bit of coloration. A little bit of green, a little bit of white, something that'll look tasty to that beaver. And then I take the wire and I cut off a piece about yay long. I don't know, two feet maybe. So I take it and I wire it to the spring eye. And I take the other one and I wire it to that spring eye. set it. You don't have to set it, you can just lay it on the ice, but just have it for me because then I get a visualization of how the springs will be. And then with the ice, we got about nine inches of ice. So I know that's about eight and a half, so I visualize that. Then I want it to be a little bit lower than the ice, so right about where that stick is at. I just wrap it twice around the stick and then back on itself. And I, take, and I do the same to the other side. Take the cable, run the cable through. Cinch it down a little. There you go, cables ran through. And I'll show you how that looks. So then in theory, the beaver's gonna come and he's gonna try to chew that bait off the bottom. He's gonna sit and he's gonna bite at it and his head will hit the trigger. So we take it, we hang it down. Um, I take cable and I put it through a stick. I hang it off over here. 
and then when I go and I set the other one, I'm going to cable it to this one. So I'm just going to run through. I'm going to make all these sets real quick. So now run it through. So it looks like one set, two set. I got it ran to the stick. One set, two set, ran to the stick. So I typically leave them out for a week. I trap on Saturdays and you know, set traps on a Saturday, come back the next Saturday and check them. That's typically what I do. So, just how my work schedule works out. So we're here, we got four traps out. The first two on this work side right here is done off. I don't know if there's anything in them. Yeah, One beaver. There's beaver number two. Got a hind foot caught beaver, the fair size one. So there's beaver number one. We'll pull up this trap and see what we got on this one. I need to bust the ice a little. This one got nothing in it. It could have been as that one was kicking around, it could have knocked this one loose. It's hard to say. But it's not a bad size beaver. Beaver number three for the day. There's the beaver. Not a bad size one. Got to be around 50 pounds. Nice bloated. We'll go put him inside the sled. It's got a really long tail too, long and skinny. We'll go put him in the sled. Okay, so we're back at that lodge where we caught the two beaver. I chipped the ice on these. I believe there's something in these as well. Just a small beaver. So we got this one chipped out. I'm trying to pull the trap out. We got ourselves a beaver. It's a nice two year old size beaver. There's a lodge. Last time we checked, after we set, we had a beaver in one of these two traps. I don't remember which one. And then the other one was set off. This one wasn't set off today. 
over there one was set off and one wasn't set off sometimes when they're set off i'm not sure maybe i'm hitting them with my chisel but it's hard to say so we're gonna take them traps put them in the sled and we got two more lodges to check today we're out here today driving around setting some beaver traps off the snowmobile and i thought i'd show you this little location so way over yonder around this little point there's an old beaver lodge and right here we got a spring and as you can see there's piles of otter scat everywhere season's closed i'm not going to set any traps but there's piles of otter scat everywhere the tracks are a little bit old there's nothing too fresh here so this was maybe a week ago but i'm sure that the otter were living in that lodge they're eating and they come up here and they just bask in the sun and you know they'd make their toilets so it's just a cool little spot to see you know take a look think about how you'd set it you know so i'd probably try to put some blind sets in because somehow some way they're getting to this location here so i'm sure that right over here they were coming through so put a 330 there 330 here over there there might be a good spot 